Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. What a joy to come together on this Easter morning to celebrate the resurrection of Christ. A little bit different as we each gather in our own homes, but in one sense when we gather in our congregations, we also are worshiping with Christians around the world on this special day. And so we gather as Sharon Lutheran Church, but with others as well, and with Christians around the world celebrating the defeat of death and God's love for us. So happy Easter to all of you, and we hope that you have a joyful time, even though a bit different on this Easter. Just one announcement before we begin, and that is we will have Wednesday worship this Wednesday, beginning at 6.15. It will be led by our Synod staff, so here's an opportunity for you to see and to hear and to be led in worship by our Synod staff, so we hope that you will um, join together 6.15 on Wednesday morning. Wednesday night. Wednesday evening. <laughs> Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. He is, he is risen. risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. He is risen indeed. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. He, he has risen, risen indeed. He is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah! He is risen. He is risen. Christ is risen. He has risen. He has risen indeed. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen. He has risen. Christ is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen! Hallelujah! The joy and peace of God be with you all. And, and also, also with you.
Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. On this day, we celebrate resurrection. The power of life has overcome the power of death. Hallelujah. The light of love has shattered the darkness of fear. Hallelujah. The way of peace has prevailed against the violence of empire. Hallelujah. We, we come, come to worship, worship the God whose resurrection power lives on in the Christ we serve. Hallelujah. Easter to you all. This morning for kids' time, I wanted to show you my little friend here. Perhaps you can tell what it is. He is a caterpillar. And a caterpillar, in their life, they eat some leaves and various things. 
And eventually, as they grow and get bigger, they start to create a cocoon, or sometimes known as a chrysalid. They climb inside the cocoon and they are changed. They stay in that chrysalid, that cocoon, for a while. And in a sense, they are kind of buried inside their cocoon. Now, I understand about six weeks ago, some of you, perhaps on a Sunday morning, along with Pastor Dominique, hid a word. A word that we hide away during the season of Lent. A word called Alleluia. Now, Pastor Dominique went hunting and searching, and I think she found it. I did. I had to dig around, and I found it, but it doesn't look quite the way we left it. Wow, look at that. Much prettier than the way we buried it. Can you read that word? It says, Alleluia. That's a special word, a word that we say a lot this day on this Easter Sunday. Now, our caterpillar friend here has been in his cocoon for a little while, and after a while of being in there, the caterpillar comes out. And he is now no longer a caterpillar, he is something different. Do you know what it is? He has become a butterfly, right? A beautiful, beautiful butterfly. Now a butterfly is a symbol for Easter as well, a symbol of new life. And we say Alleluia today because Jesus is no longer in the tomb. Jesus is alive and risen. He has come out of the tomb and is alive, has given a new life to you and to me. In a moment, Higher Ground is going to sing a beautiful song about He is alive for us. But before we do, let us pray together. Please repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, Dear God thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for coming to earth. Thank you for coming to earth. For dying and rising again for dying and rising again. Thank you for the new life that you give us. Thank you for the new life that you give us. May we share that news. May we share that news. With everyone. With everyone. Amen. Amen. Let's join in singing, He is Alive.
Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our psalm reading today is from Psalm 118. We will read it responsibly. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended in from heaven, came back and rolled the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. O Lord, we give you thanks on this Easter day for the joy that that brings. We thank you for new life. We thank you for the amazing message that though Jesus was dead, now he is alive. So let that message ring true for us, O Lord, as well. And remind us that not even death keeps you away. And not even death can stop you from showing your love to us or for giving us life. So bless us on this Easter day. <clears throat> be with us in our celebrations. And be with us as, the, as we celebrate new life. All of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. 
Those are powerful words. Those are really amazing words when you think about it. Those are words that make you and I as Christians who we are. This message of new life that Jesus rose from the dead. I have to admit, though, saying those words in a very strange setting this year. There are no cars in the parking lot. There are no people in the street, in the, in the pews. There are very few flowers up here. There are no extra musicians helping to sing these, these uh, Easter hymns so that they're loud and, and strong. It's still Easter. We still have that message of new life. It's just very different. I was talking with Cheryl Nyland, our interim Christian Ed director, a while ago, a couple weeks ago, and she said, this is the first year I can remember that I won't be in church on Easter. And I thought about it, and I thought, you know what, that is true for me as well. For as long as I can remember, I've always been in church on Easter Sunday. And for many, many years, I've spent the entire morning in church on Easter Sunday. This is a very different Easter. We don't come to church. We don't gather as families. We don't have uh, churches that are packed with people. It's a different kind of Easter. But if you think about it, that first Easter was a little bit different as well. I mean, we've come to kind of take for granted that the, the uh, women went to the tomb, they found it empty, um, and they ran and told the disciples, and so we know the story. But if you listen to this week's Gospel text from Matthew, the story of the resurrection, there's some kind of scary things going on in there, very different. As the women approach the tomb, what they find and what they experience is an earthquake. An earthquake that, as they're walking to this place. They were going simply to prepare the body of their friend Jesus because they hadn't been able to do that on Friday when he died. And as they come here, not only do they experience an earthquake, but the stone is rolled back and there is an angel. An angel who just glows. And that angel is sitting on the, on the tomb and tells them, do not be afraid. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, but he has been raised. And so they hear this message that they didn't expect to hear. They came expecting a dead body and found no, no body at all in the tomb, but a message that he has come to life. It's not what he expected. Or it's not what they expected at all. And even if you listen to this text, you hear fear pouring through the text. The message is wonderful, but there's fear kind of uh, trapping them around the sides. First of all, you, you hear it four times. First of all, you hear it when the guards who are around the tomb experience that earthquake. They shook with fear and became like dead men. I mean, that's pretty, pretty scary. That's a lot of fear. And then the angel that was sitting there looked at these women who must have been terrified of what was going on and said to them, do not be afraid. And then when, after the angel told the woman the message that Jesus had been raised, we read that the women went with fear and great joy. They went to tell the disciples. And then when they encountered Jesus on the way, the first thing Jesus said to them was, do not fear. Fear isn't really what we think about, I don't think, when we think of Easter. I mean, when I think of Easter, I think of brass, I think of loud hymns, I think of hundreds of people gathered together, I think of trumpets, I think of He is risen, He is risen indeed, balloons and celebration, green grass and new life. But when you listen to this text, that first Easter was certainly a message of life, stunning life, not what they expected to find, but life mixed with fear. Those women wondered, what is going on? And what does this mean that Jesus is raised from the dead, that there's this angel here? Is this real? Could Jesus really be alive? And perhaps, how does this work? How does this happen? Does anything make any sense anymore, or are we just dreaming? Even though it was, in a real sense, good news, it was frightening. Fear is really a part of life, isn't it? I mean, we've all faced fear. We're all afraid of something, whether we want to admit it or not. But we all know inside there are those things that come upon us or that we encounter that just bring fear in our lives. And if you look at Scripture, fear is all through Scripture, even with these faithful people of God. There are all kinds of places in Scripture where you hear, 
do not be afraid. I mean, remember when the angel went to Mary to tell her that she was going to bear the Son of God. And the greeting to Mary was, do not be afraid, Mary. And then to Joseph, when he had decided that the best thing that he ought to do would be to divorce Mary quietly. And the angel visited Joseph and said, do not be afraid. You look in the Old Testament and Moses, who was that leader that we look at as the strong, bold leader who led the Israelites out of um, slavery and into freedom. And God said to Moses, do not be afraid. In Joshua, when he was fighting the battle, battle of Jericho, not an easy thing to do, but he was told as well, do not be afraid. And Ruth, who went to her mother's homeland, her mother-in-law's homeland with her, do not be afraid. The shepherds, when Jesus was born, were greeted with that same greeting, do not be afraid. And remember when Jesus called the disciples, do not be afraid, from now on you'll be catching people. And when, the, when uh, Jesus was encountering the disciples walking on the water to meet with them in the boat, and he said, do not be afraid, it's only me. They were afraid of what they saw. Over and over and over again in scripture we read, do not be afraid. And Jesus says it to you and to me as well. In John 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. It's not hard at all to find places in the Bible where fear is talked about and where we hear those words, do not be afraid. But that doesn't mean that life is going to be easy. I mean, look at the lives of these scripture people that I talked about. Mary didn't have an easy life bearing Jesus and bringing him up and then watching him, standing at the foot of the cross, watching him as he died. Moses didn't have an easy time with those Israelites that really didn't want to follow him. The disciples got into places that scared them, places they didn't understand, going places they didn't want to go or never intended to go, and yet they went. Life wasn't easy. The Apostle Paul, God told him, do not be afraid. But look at what Paul endured and what Paul went through. All of these people went through difficult times, being beaten or being imprisoned or being rejected, even death because of who they were, but the word to them was, do not be afraid. That's God's word to us each day. Do not be afraid. God is with us, and God never leaves us. We live in the palm of God's hands, and we're never left alone. God walks with us and strengthens us and gives us what we need each day and each day through each thing that we encounter. And perhaps most importantly, God has the last word. That's what Easter is all about. It seemed that death had won, but God had the last word. God gives life even in the midst of death. Today is Easter, and it's a bit of a strange Easter. Little of what we normally do on Easter is happening today. Little of what we would choose to do or want to do is happening. And for us, too, fear is in the air. Many wearing masks. All of us trying to stay six feet apart. Not having gatherings of people, not even families together. Or gatherings for weddings or gatherings for funeral. News is frightening and the numbers scare us when we listen to them. We worry and wonder about the economy, about businesses, about our jobs, about our health. There's lots to be afraid of. Lots of fear. Lots of unknown, which usually means more fear. Perhaps that fear of the unknown is the greatest fear. What we don't know can really scare us. But what we do know can make all the difference. And what we know is that God loves us. We saw on Good Friday God's willing to go even to the cross to save us. And that God has promised always to be with us. And that God knows us intimately, even how many hairs we have on our head. And we know that God is a God of life, a God of love, and a God of forgiveness. And in Easter, whether it be an Easter like this one, or an Easter in the way that we used to celebrate, that we knew from every other year, that Easter is the day that God rose Jesus from the dead. 
and shows us that God is a God of life. And not anyone or anything else has the last word, even in the most dire of times. We're not alone, and we're not on our own. So fear might be real, and we feel it even today. But God is here, and God gives hope. And God, most importantly, has the last word. I read the story just the other day of the, uh, the funeral of Winston Churchill. And at his funeral, at his request, what happened was at the end of the funeral, over in the west side of the church that they were in, they had a trumpeter that played taps, what we play at the end of the day. And then there was silence at the end of the taps, a brief pause, and then from the other side of the church, there was a trumpeter that, prayed, that played revelry, this morning greeting, a time to get up. A powerful message in that funeral, that though we go through death, we're called to new life. God has the last word. So today is Easter, and we celebrate and we proclaim Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And we say those words even while we live with fear. But what we're saying is God, not death, nor anything else has the final word. Even the fears of COVID-19 don't have the last word. God does. And God is here where we are. God's word to us is, do not be afraid. I am with you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all of our understanding, guard you and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
God's promises. And so together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join us in the prayers of the people. The prayer response will be on the screen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God at all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of resurrection, you give the church the gift of proclamation of new life. Make us faithful in our calling, and especially these days, let us shout and celebrate the gift of hope and new life for all people. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All your creation praises you. The earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glor glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the songs of spring and new life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The countries and the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Guide us in this pandemic and lead us to work together to find a way to defeat it. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence. Be especially with Erica, Carolyn, Kevin, Ginger, and all of those who are suffering from COVID-19 and their families, and the others whose names we lift before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us patience in these days, O Lord, as we stay at home. Show us ways to stay connected with others, to help those that need help, to give a word of hope to those that need hope, and be the gift of friendship to those that are alone. Bless and protect all medical personnel as they care for the sick. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Help us today to celebrate the new life you give to us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we pause for our morning's offering. As the uh, ladies went to the tomb to bear their gifts to Jesus, we pause and bear our gifts to Jesus this day. We invite you to consider how you would give your offering and support to the ministry here at Sharon. You can do so by going to our website and doing online giving, or by mailing in your offering to the church. We invite you also to consider uh, in your own congregation, if you belong to another congregation, consider how you can support their ministry uh, as well. Let us join together in prayer as we consider the gifts that we have been given and how we may give in return. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table. 
for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the one who raised Jesus from the dead raise you to new life. May you be filled with the hope of the resurrection. May your mourning be turned into dancing. And may our Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you both now and forever. Amen. Amen.
risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ has risen indeed. He, he has, has risen, risen indeed. indeed. He is risen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen. Christ is risen. He has risen. He has risen indeed. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. He is risen. He has risen. Christ is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. Hallelujah.